At what point in treatment should autologous stem cell transplant be considered, and is there a best time to have an autologous stem cell transplant? Most of the transplant that we do for myeloma patients is done as what we call an upfront transplant. That means a person gets diagnosed with myeloma. We kind of decide with the person is a candidate for transplant. That depends on their age to some extent, their organ function to a bigger extent, which means they have to have good cardiac or heart, lung, kidney, liver functions. And then um, after a period of, in such patients who are eligible, after a period of about four or five months of initial therapy that is designed to control the disease, then we feel that the person is fit enough to give us stem cells to collect and freeze, and then we take them immediately to transplant. That is called an upfront transplant. Most of the transplant studies that were done, which established this modality of treatment, were done in the setting where patients got initial treatment for about four to five months, then got an autologous transplant, sometimes a tandem transplant where you get two, two back to back, versus they were compared with people who just continued on chemotherapy. And the vast majority of studies have shown that, in almost all cases, uh, these studies have shown that the people who got a transplant had a longer remission. We call that a longer progression-free survival, which means they had a, a time of remission or freedom from progression of myeloma that was longer than if they just continued on chemotherapy. And in some of the cases, they had a longer overall survival, which means that if you follow these patients out for a greater length of time, the people who got transplant ultimately lived longer even after multiple relapses, etc. So essentially, um, autologous transplants got established in the early 90s and have to this day always in every study that has been done has pro provided a longer progression-free survival for the patients who got that versus just continued on chemo. So that's the role for upfront transplant. You can also have a transplant in a person who stored their stem cells upfront, but then chose for whatever reason not to have a transplant right away. And then when they relapse, uh, after the first line of chemotherapy fails, they could have a transplant at that point. That'd be called a delayed autologous transplant. And then a, the third setting is when someone who has had a transplant and they were in remission for several years, they, when they relapse, they can get another treatment which puts them back in remission and then get a transplant to make that re response last longer too. So we call that a second salvage transplant. So the question of whether or not one should get an autologous stem cell transplant is a question often asked in the clinic, and it can be very confusing to uh, many, many patients. And the second question to that is, should we get it up front or can I hold off and get it at a later date? Um, you know, we have data now in the context of an autologous stem cell transplant. We've done a large trial. We've then randomize people to either get a transplant or not get a transplant, and then they've gone on to maintenance. And when you look at that data, the data shows us that patients who got a transplant had a significant benefit in terms of disease control, and it was as high as 18 months. But then if you look at overall survival, there was really no difference. So I think simplistically putting it, I think it's an important conversation to have with your oncologist. I think collecting the stem cells is a no-brainer. High-dose melphalan with autologous stem cell transplant or rescue should be considered for newly diagnosed myeloma patients. I don't put age as a number, but um, if patients are fit or even intermediate fit, um, they should at least have a discussion. But I think you know having that conversation is important um, in the newly diagnosed setting. If the patients for some reason decide not to get a stem cell transplant or did not have access to it as part of their frontline treatment, um, they should be offered that opportunity during their first uh, relapse. You don't get as much bang for your buck um, the more advanced myeloma patients get, um, um, you know, the, the less bang for the buck you get with high-dose melphalan. In the relapse refractory setting, when the blood counts are declining, uh, we tend to utilize high-dose melphalan with stem cell rescue to help augment the patient's blood counts. Because if the blood counts, especially the platelets, if they're low, patients may not qualify for a clinical trial. So that's where we would utilize it. You know, it would be a temporizing measure to get patients to a clinical trial. So th those would be the three buckets. Newly diagnosed setting, you know, whenever you can. Um, 
a first relapse setting for those patients who did not get it the first time around or had at least three and a half to four years benefit from the first one and they're still young and that would still be an option. The third would be to improve the blood counts um, in, a, in a more advanced patient where you already have the stem cells stored up uh, in the freezer. So I've shared these data from um, a big international myeloma working group study that we did uh, collecting data on more than 7,000 uh, newly diagnosed myeloma patients going through stem cell transplant trials around the world, um, showing that patients who get to a complete response um, or better during their first year of diagnosis have almost a three-year overall survival benefit compared to those who did not achieve complete response. The reason why I bring that up is um, picking the best available strategy to get your patients to the best depth of response during that first year of diagnosis is important. Um, uh, you know, historically, we have had examples and anecdotes of patients doing exceptionally well with just a little bit of uh, treatment. But those are exceptions, they're not the rules. Um, and you know, when, when you look at data, um, you, know, you, you don't say, oh, you know, there, there was once a patient that I treated with just uh, um, salt and, and they did well for 15 years. You don't say that, you, know, you, you look at the data objectively and, and you look at the whole population and, and then you, you come out and make a statement. Um, so I think it's important um, for us to you know, consider that. So depth of response is important. What you do for our myeloma patients during that first year of diagnosis is very important. That's our best chance to get patients to MRD negativity. So in, in that context, um, I think um, at the current moment, um, high dose melphalan gives that patient who's coming to see you the best chance of getting that depth of response in combination with uh, the rest of your therapies. So it, it should still be considered a standard of care. I still think it's reasonable for patients to consider high dose therapy, especially if they're younger, because as you get older, it may be a little more difficult to tolerate the high dose malplan. It's not fun. Uh, it can be anywhere from one to three months of recovery from that because it does wear the patient down. And a lot of patients, even after they have count recovery, will go home saying they, they're quite fatigued. And it can take several weeks to get over that fatigue. But usually by three months after the stem cell uh, transplant, most patients are back to close to normal and definitely by six months.